Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Wine Ants Wednesday. Hey, <laughs> this is our weekly live stream show and podcast. We talk about all things related to financial independence. We help you live a more intentional life by learning how to spend more intentionally and, of course, growing and investing your money more intentionally. We are your hosts and sisters and personal finance educators, Marie and Stephanie. <laughs> Hi, everyone. And thank you so much for tuning in again this week for Wine Ants Wednesday. We have a really great show for you today. Um, we're going to be talking about um, spending intentionally and more importantly, tracking your expenses and um, just all things related to that. So we've got a really great show for you today. Um, but to kick us off, actually, before I kick us off, I um, wanted to give everyone a reminder that we have our Wine Ants Workshop coming up next week, next Thursday on October 22nd at 7 p.m., um, it's called Building Wealth Through Your 401k. And um, if you've been following us for any period of time, you know that Stephanie and I, we absolutely love our 401ks. Um, and the reason being is that it's perhaps the biggest reason why we've both been able to grill, build multiple six-figure portfolios within just a few years. Yep. Um, and so we want to see you build that same kind of wealth. And so we're going to walk you through what to invest in for yourself, um, how to maximize your contributions, how to maximize growth how to navigate your provider website, and so much more. So uh, go to winancefi.com slash workshops with an S um, to register for our workshop. And we hope to see you there. Definitely. So of course, we have to start it off with the most important thing. Who is watching and what you drinking? What you drinking? <laughs> what you drinking today, Marie? Oh, I'm boring. I just have seltzer tonight. I had a little, I kind of felt like I had a headache today. So I just felt like I should hydrate a little bit more. I know. I think today is an easygoing night for all of us because yes. I too am going a bit easy. However, mine is a bit flourished. Oh, so our, fancy. Beverage of the week. Yeah. What do we got going on? Is my uh, kombucha mocktail. Nice. Okay. Here. It is super easy to make. It is eight ounces of kombucha, your flavor of choice, one lime wedge, and a sprig of fresh mint. And all you have to do is muddle the lime and mint together, add in a little bit of ice, the kombucha, stir, and enjoy. So what is kombucha? <laughs> uh, kombucha is a, uh, let's see, what is it? A... <laughs> Fermented, I had to think about it. Fermented tea. Okay. So I actually was told, I think we have some audio issues. So hang on. Uh oh. I know you can hear me, but no one else can hear me. I did have to turn up the volume a little bit, but I thought that was just myself. No. Let me. The magic of live, everybody. I know. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Let me see. Is that better, stuff? Let's see. I can hear you better now. You sound a little bit louder. I switched my my audio input. So hopefully, if anyone can't hear me, please let me know now. <laughs> you sound a little bit more distant, but I can hear you. Okay, yeah, yeah. I have a different audio input, so it probably doesn't sound as good. But if you can't hear right. me, let me know. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. <laughs> All right, we're going to keep it going then. <laughs> All right, yeah, so you so were saying kombucha. Fermented tea. Um, and actually, so the one I have is Synergy Raw Kombucha, which hopefully you can see that the label's like kind of shiny and mm -hmm. makes it difficult to see. But yeah, there we go. Okay, kind of there we go. Yep. Raw Kombucha. And this flavor is Trilogy, which is, um, let's see, tea, black tea, green tea, kiwi juice, raspberry, and lemon and ginger. So it's kind of a, just a fruity, flavorful beverage. And it's a nice little light thing to end your day and whatnot. And so this is my go-to when I want to have like a fun little beverage, but, you know, make it an Not easy Not alcoholic. Night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it have caffeine in it? It's tea. So I'm thinking if it has it's energy. Probably, it might have a little bit of caffeine. Actually, what it has is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of alcohol. It has like 0.05%. Oh, I think okay. kombucha legally can only have like up to 2%. So mm. that's, that's all you can get, but gotcha. you know, it, it's good. It, it doesn't really do much for you other than taste delicious. <laughs> well, it looks delicious. And I think I might have to try some kombucha after this. All right. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. So why don't we talk about last week's challenge of the week? Yes. So last week's challenge of the week, we want to check in with everyone to see yeah. if, how you did with your challenge. So yes. it was to start tracking your net worth. And we recommend it using an app like Mint or Personal Capital. And we've recommended those before and we discussed them last week and probably weeks prior. And Marie and I both use those, both of those apps. I also track my net worth on a spreadsheet, which I did update. So when we did it last week, that was my due date. For, I do it every three months and I was supposed to do it that day. I was busy, didn't have a chance to do it. So I did it that Thursday. Mm -hmm. I updated it and we grew again over the past three months. Yay. Yay. I know. So that's awesome. So that's yeah. the thing is like, even though it's only three months, you can see these small wins. And that's yeah. one of the things I love about doing it. Even if you're starting at the negative or zero or whatever you might be starting with, when you see that incremental growth, like it's so motivating. And it's like, okay, yes. I'm actually doing something. I'm moving somewhere. Like this, this past three months have flown by, you know, the, mm -hmm. the last time I did it was July. And, you know, I'll, I'll say that like, not a lot has happened, like a lot has happened, but not a lot has happened financially for us. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much been steady, but really mm -hmm. just all that money in the market is what's made it grow. It's not like I was saving any more than I could have or would have otherwise over the past three months, but money in the your market, returns. that's the way to get that net worth up. Yeah, your returns from being invested in the market. You know, I heard an interesting quote today. It kind of goes along with this. I don't know if it's like a quote, but, um, or more like a stat, but it says that um, most people overestimate what they can achieve in a year and they underestimate what they can do in five to 10 years. Now, obviously this scale is much larger than what you're talking about in the past three months. But I was thinking about this in terms of you know, tracking your net worth because last night I was doing the same thing. Actually, I was tracking my net, my net worth. And, um, you know, I was feeling like, I don't know why I was feeling like a little defeated, you know, oh, I just want to see more growth. I want to see more growth because obviously this has been a slower year in terms of market returns than in years past. And my husband like gave me so much perspective. You know, he was like, look at where we started, like, look at where we started the year and considering everything that has happened this year with the market downturn, especially in March, like everything that's happened this year, we are still up significantly in our portfolio. But, you know, in my head, I'm like, I want more. Um, and it's, you know, I have to remember that it's that five to 10 year, like you're playing the long game when you're investing, yeah. you know, you're yeah. playing the long game. So, um, by the way, so, you know, I am a personal capital girl. <laughs> we talk about this all the time. Yeah. Stephanie is team mint and I'm team personal capital, but, um, we did talk about that personal capital has been having some issues connecting with all of our bank accounts. And mm -hmm. I've had several accounts for months that just have not been able to update. And it's been a little bit frustrating. And so I said, you know what, let me go back and check out Mint. You know, it's been a while since I've used Mint. And I did have to go back and re, um, uh, reconnect, you know, mm -hmm. my some of my accounts. I had some old accounts in there. Some stuff, it was like three, four, five years old that I needed yeah. to, to get rid of. But um, it actually pulled all of my accounts in. It recalculated my net worth. Um, it was actually a lot easier than I remember it being. So I might start being a little team I'm, Mint here. I'm telling you, Mint, I will, like I said, <laughs> I'm not going to say they're perfect, but yeah. they have gotten a lot better over the past few years. And I will say when they have a connection issue, like one for a free service, they have amazing customer service. Like every time I've had an issue that mm. hasn't, they haven't like actively said, yes, we know that, you know, you can't connect to American Express or you can't connect to Fidelity or whoever it mm. is. If it's something that I'm like, well, I don't know, is it just me or is everybody having issues? All, you know, you can do a message with them and a chat with them, you can email them and they get back to you right away. And they they will follow up. I'm like, this is a free service and you're doing all this. Great. So, you know, like I said, they're not perfect, but I think that they're pretty good for what you get. And considering you're not paying anything, it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> we were probably paying and, and sharing all our data, but that's everybody, at least. If getting a service <laughs> I can't even it. think about that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but all I, right. I do think it's actually a good segue into um, this week's topic. Absolutely. So this week's topic is spending intentionally, and we're focusing on tracking your expenses, which in our opinion is the first step to creating a budget. 
So a lot of people will say that when you start, a, you know, you want to get your financial house in order, you start with a budget and you figure out how much you need to pay for all your bills and your expenses each month. And that's how much you should spend never anymore. And, you know, all the rest of the money should go into savings. Now, absolutely. That's a great idea in theory and on paper. But let's face it. We all live in the real world. You know, things come up, little expenses come up here and there. And so it's impossible to stick to a budget to the T. But also mm -hmm. the first question is, well, how much should I be spending? And that's the thing where people kind of gloss over that fact of, well, how much really should I spend on my groceries each month? And how much of a car payment should I be able to afford or a rent payment? You know, how much should I spend on my, my fun activities, going out to eat or going out to happy hours at a bar or whatever? You know, what are all these extra expenses that have a variable amount each month? How do you determine what's right for you? And so that's what this episode is going to be about. It's talking about really tracking your expenses, figuring out how much you're spending today so that you can figure out how much you really should be spending tomorrow and for years to come. And so we'll go into details about what that really means, how to actually apply that to your life, how to create a budget based on that information. Um, and so that's that's pretty much what this episode is going to be about. I'm super excited because I think this is a topic, like I said, that I think a lot of people will um, not really go into depth about and kind of gloss over when they're talking about getting finances in order. But I think it's really important to take as your first step. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you really can't. It, whether you're pursuing financial independence or you're just trying to get like, like, as you say, Stephanie, get your financial house in order. You cannot do any of those things until you understand where your money is going. And that's the benefit of tracking your expenses. You need to know your numbers. We talk about this all the time, the importance of knowing your numbers. So um, why don't we pull up budgeting versus tracking expenses? Absolutely. So that's kind of the first thing is understanding what that difference is for budgeting versus tracking expenses. So a budget and budgeting is basically how much you should be spending, how you should be spending your money. We all know that, OK, I only want to spend, you know, two hundred dollars on groceries this month and my rent shouldn't be more than fifteen hundred dollars a month. And I want my cell phone to be sixty dollars a month and I'm going to only go out to eat like once a month, you know, and it's only going to be, you know, a hundred dollars at the most for, for going out and having fun and, and doing things. And we all like we miss those things. That's where we miss the target. Whereas tracking your expenses is, like we said, the first step, and that's how much you're actually spending. So yes, you might have planned to only spend $200 on groceries this month, but in reality, you spent $300 or $400, and you plan to only go to a happy hour once because you knew your friend's birthday was coming up, and you said, well, yeah, I'm definitely going to go out for that one night. But then she had a second birthday celebration because some of us like to celebrate our birthday all month long. And so <laughs> you're not going to say no because she's your bestie. <laughs> <laughs> and so now. you go out that second time and maybe a third time because you know your mom came in town who knows whatever it is and so that's the thing is that's how much you're really spending those are your actual expenses and so that's what we're going to be talking about tracking your expenses we're not going to be sitting here saying how much you should be spending in each category we're saying figure out what you're spending now what are you spending today what have you been spending for the past six months you know because that's really what it is not even this month because even from month to month it can change you yeah. might have bills like a, a, an insurance car insurance bill or something else that comes around every six months or every 12 months so your budget's going to be slightly different that month versus other ones so mm -hmm. that's the thing what's your trend over the past six to 12 months in most of the categories that you're spending on a regular and figuring that out. So that's what we're talking about in terms of the difference between budgeting versus tracking expenses. That's right. So I think what's important is to talk about first why tracking your expenses is the yeah. first step. And we kind of said that, but let's go into more detail about why this really should be your first step when you want to create a budget. Yeah. So I think of it as like when you're when you're setting up your budget and you kind of mentioned this stuff is that you really can't set up your budget without first determining how much you, how you actually spend your money, how you spend your money. So you need to understand what categories you're spending in. Also, what merchants that you're spending your money in. Um, Amazon <laughs> is a really good example of that has become a category for people where because you buy everything from them. It's not like you go to, you know, Home Depot and, you know, nine times out of 10, whatever you're buying from Home Depot is something home improvement related. Whatever you're buying from Amazon, when you get an order, you could get five different things that could fit into five different categories. Yep. And so 
you need to understand how your money is going. And I really feel like we could come up, come up with like a whole episode just about how to categorize your Amazon. Oh my God, I know, Amazon or Target, basically any place yeah. you go where you can buy a plethora of items that just span all the categories, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's the first thing. And if you're using one of those apps that we talked about before, Personal Capital or Mint, there's another one called Clarity. Then, you know, there's a ton of budgeting apps out there. So, you know, finding one that you like is going to be very important. But even if you don't use an app, you know, you can use a spreadsheet. Um, you know, Stephanie is a spreadsheet queen. <laughs> and you can export your expenses from your bank or from your credit card. Um, and they will have merchant catters. Ah, I cannot say that word. <laughs> yes, merchant category codes, MCCs. I work for a credit card company, so mm. this is our this is our lingo. That's MCC. Lingo. <laughs> that is a lingo. Well, you know those categories actually true back to what kind of bonuses you can get. So, like if you have like an everyday credit card um, where you can get money back on gas and groceries, it you might be buying groceries from you know, a, a certain type of store, but if that store isn't a, a grocery store, it isn't categorized by one, you uh, you won't get the points for it. So that's a little bonus tip for you guys today. <laughs> well, also vice versa, because I do do that. I do the credit card points and mm -hmm. I will buy things from my grocery store that I could get somewhere else, but I'll get mm -hmm. extra cash back through my grocery store than I would just buying it at Target yeah. or Walmart or wherever. Yeah. So I'll do that. But I have to categorize that thing differently on my tracking sheet and my budget yeah. sheet than what the credit card actually considers it. That's right. So, so I'd say number one is when you're starting to build your budget, you need to understand where your money is going towards and what you're spending your money on. Um, and then the second thing is that, you know, you've got certain um, expenses that recur every single month, and then you've got, you know, fluctuating expenses. So the things that you spend every single month would be, you know, fixed expenses, like your mortgage or your rent, your, um, you know, your, uh, your, your car payment. Bill. Car yeah, payment, cell phone yeah. bill, car payment, insurance, those things are fixed expenses. This it it's the same exact amount every single month. You also have monthly expenses that are fluctuating expenses like gas, groceries, although is anyone buying gas anymore these days? My <laughs> <laughs> gas bill is like practically oh nothing now. I know. I, I haven't filled up my I don't think I filled up in like three weeks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's only because I drove down to see you recently. Yeah. <laughs> um so you have so you have those fixed expenses and you have those fluctuating expenses and then you have just one off expenses too you know um for example um you know my dog he has uh, cardiac problems he has heart problems and so um he has to go to the cardiologist every single year um and so that's an expense that we know is going to come up once a year um and so we either have to you know plan for it ahead of time or you know when when it does come up we kind of need to be able to track it we know that okay our our pet expenses, our vet expenses for this month are going to be through the roof or <laughs> it's how it feels to us <laughs> through the roof. So um, it's important to know, you know, exactly what categories you're spending in and, and detailing what are your known expenses versus, you know, your unknown expenses. What are your fixed expenses versus your fluctuating expenses? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the thing where I remember when I first started to try to create a budget and this was like, 10 plus years ago and before I, you know, Mint was around or before I started using it. And literally I would write it on a post-it note and I would sit there and try to figure out, okay, well, this is how much I should be spending. But that's the reality is that I never missed or I never met those targets. Like I always miss them. So mm -hmm. I, unless it was that fixed expense where I know, okay, my cell phone bill is exactly this amount of money each month, all those variable expenses, I, I I was so far off from it because I really had no idea how much I was spending. I knew how much I wanted to be spending, but I had no idea how much I actually was. Yeah. And so I think that's kind of the, the good segue to the next point of it. Mm -hmm. And I think the important thing is when once you start tracking your expenses, you know how much you are typically spending in a category. Whether that is the right thing or the wrong thing for you is something that you need to determine. So mm -hmm. the next step is once you start to track your expenses and you see how much you're typically spending in your various categories, determining what the right amount for you is for each of those categories 
and figuring out a budget that fits for you. So a good example is groceries. We all want to cut back on our grocery bill, but we all have to eat. So, <laughs> you know, and, and fine if you're, if you're not a grocery person and you eat out every month or whatever, that's fine too. That's that, if that's what you're doing, then do you boo. <laughs> but you know, the thing is that you need to figure out how much you really want to be spending. So let's mm -hmm. say for your grocery bill, it's you and your significant other and you're spending, you know, $400 a month on groceries. Maybe that's just how much you spend. If every month you want to only spend 200, but you always end up spending 300 or 400, then that's how much you spend on groceries. And that's mm -hmm. fine. Don't feel bad about that. If you're getting the food you want and quality food and it's worth it to you to be spending that much money, but that's just how much you're spending. And that's just how much you're spending. And yeah. so I think that's the key is not feeling shame or guilt because you're spending more than, you know, your friends or your neighbors or whoever else, you know, comparing other people's budget to yours. I think that's the problem is that like, especially on a lot of the FI groups and, and everything in the community, people will share the information. They'll say, oh, I, you know, my typical budget is $200 a month for groceries. And I'm like, $200, like, where do you shop? I, <laughs> and what how do often you do you shop? <laughs> <laughs> I know. And that's the thing. So you need to figure out what's right for them. I have no idea. Are they feeding themselves or family of four? Yeah, are, you know, point. are you buying like super high quality, expensive organic food? Or are you buying like conventional, just bottom of the shelf, whatever, you know, kind of junk food? I don't know. You know, but again, that's the thing is everybody's situation is different and you need to accept what your situation is and mm. be proud of it and own it. You know, that's the thing. Um, actually someone just posted yesterday about their grocery bill. They saw someone, their family of three going on four. She's going to have a baby soon. And um, she sees all these people posting about their $400 grocery bill, but she eats organic. She eats, mm -hmm. you know, non GMO and, and fruits and vegetables. So she buys a lot of like fresh meats and fresh fruits and vegetables and produce. Mm -hmm. And her bill is typically around, six hundred dollars and she's like how do i get it down to four hundred dollars a month and i replied to her and i said you don't <laughs> i mean that's the reality is um yeah. you know when we started shopping at aldi's and lidl it was it definitely cut our our grocery yeah. bill nearly in half because we were spending around six hundred dollars a month at you know conventional grocery stores at safeway and and giant which are like kroger and Shoprite or whatever they are in other parts of the country <laughs> but <laughs> you know, your, your kind of traditional grocery store, I was spending $600 a month. And then when we started shopping at, at, you know, cheaper grocery stores, I, it cut in half. Some months I even spent $300. Um, but our typical was around 400. And then this past year, I decided that we needed to start eating a little bit better. And so we would, I buy now organic food, um, grass fed, organic you know, dairy and organic produce. Um, I try to buy, you know, if it's a processed food, not a highly processed food that doesn't have a lot of conventional oils in it, all these things end up costing more money. And that's the yeah. reality of it. Now, the good thing is that you can shop around and find places that don't charge a ton for, more for these things. Um, some places do, you know, I'm not going to name names, but there's other places who Whole sell paycheck. foods that uh, <laughs> cost more to buy these whole foods. <laughs> but you can find sales. <laughs> yeah. And that's the point. And so either way, my grocery bill went back up to $600 a month. Yeah. And for a while, I kept beating myself up because I was like, man, you know, I got my bill down to 400. And now we're back at 600. And I felt like it was because we were buying all this food. And we were a little bit because of the whole pandemic thing. I felt like I had to stock up and hoard a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm going less often than I used to to the store. But then I kind of thought about it. I'm like, you know what? I'm buying far more quality foods. Yeah. And that's just the reality of it. And that's just what my budget is. So now I proudly set my budget each month to five fifty, six hundred dollars If I stick around that, then I'm a-okay. Yeah. So I think that's the key is just finding what actually works for you in terms of your budget. I mean, again, you can't really compare yourself to other people. You shouldn't feel shame or guilt for, for going over in a category, mm -hmm. you know, month after month, because if that's what you're constantly doing, then let's face the reality. That's how much you spend in that category. The other option is to then start cutting back in other categories. I mean, I think the point is that if I go to the grocery store, you know, each month and I'm spending $600, but then I'm also spending, you know, $600 at Target or Amazon each month. And I go, well, what the heck did I buy at, at Target uh, for $600? I and I have no idea what I spent. Yeah. 
you know, what I bought, then that's something to start thinking about. That means that I'm not spending intentionally. That means mm. that the stuff that I bought is no longer in my mind. When I go to the grocery store, I know exactly what I'm getting. I can say, well, I got these grass fed steaks and I got this organic milk and I bought all these produce and I made this you know, beautiful meal for my family. If I spend $200 on a trip to Target, I probably got like two pairs of pants, you know, some random aisle thing that you're like, oh, that's cute, you know? Yeah. Who <laughs> knows what else? I mean, that's the thing. It's stuff that I probably don't care too much about unless that's what you went intentionally there for. So yeah. I think like, clueing back to our point of, of spending intentionally is that if you are spending a certain amount in a category each month and it's over your budget, but that's just what you spend, then perhaps you need to take a look at that and say, are the things that I'm buying in this category intentional or not? If they're intentional, then accept that that's what your budget is and figure out where else to pull from. If you say I'm spending way too much and I have no idea what I really got, then say, okay, I'm not really spending intentionally. I need to be more conscious about what I'm buying when I mm -hmm. shop in the store or in this category. Yeah. And I think that kind of leads us in well into the uh, question of the week, which mm. if you saw our <laughs> post earlier today, then you already know, and hopefully you already have your answer. Yeah. <laughs> which is, what is a category that you always seem to overspend in? Yeah. So this was an interesting one. I thought we would have seen more people say groceries, but at least two or three people said gifts, yeah. which I guess is another category that people typically will, um, maybe it's not even overspend in, but just like, um, don't plan as, as well, um, mm -hmm. for gifts. Um, I think, and especially coming up, well, like the holidays are coming up. Um, you know, I think that's a very easy category for people to end up yeah. going over their budget on, um, because, you know, just, you, I mean, that's how you, that's one of the love languages, literally giving gifts is, is a love language. And for a lot of people giving gifts is buying something, you know, um, there are lots of ways that you can give gifts, but for most, by the most traditional definition, it's buying something. And so, yeah, I could definitely see why people would go over budget, you know, spending money on Christmas gifts and, and things like that. Oh, definitely. You know, yeah. I think one of the things that I, when I thought about when I saw the gifts thing, I was like, oh yeah, I do always overspend in gifts. Yeah. And then I realized what I tend to overspend in is parties. The, the few times a year that I host a party, like, you know, uh, my son's birthday party or, or birthday party for my husband or whoever it might be. I always say, okay, I'm only going to, I'm going to have a host this little thing. I'm not going to go out of my way to, to do all this stuff. I'm not buying decorations. We'll just, I'll make, I'll whip up something. We'll buy pizzas and be done with it. 200 some odd dollars later, I bought decorations, balloons, helium tanks. I got all this food from Wegmans and, and other places. <laughs> I've made yeah. a full display and platter. Like I always just go way overboard, even though in my mind, it's going to be this simple, tiny little thing, you know, so. It never is the case, especially never, with parties. It never is. Well, and people always overestimate how much food they should have for parties. People never eat as much food at parties yeah. too. So it just ends up being sort of not a waste because you know, hopefully you can eat that yeah, food. Leftovers. <laughs> yeah, leftovers. Um, yeah. You know, I think the area that I was going to say groceries, but you actually kind of reminded me that, you know, we are in the middle of the pandemic, people aren't eating out as much. And so my dining out budget has gone down significantly. I mean, I wasn't hugely eating out a lot, but you know, we would, you know, order, um, you know, I'd get lunch maybe once a week out. And that stopped completely. I don't get lunch at all. I don't leave my house. <laughs> I know. <laughs> at all. And so, but my food budget has definitely increased because we've been quarantined and I was feeling kind of, you know, a little upset that I, you know, we were spending more in our food budget, but I realized that, you know, we're, we're, we're still coming in less in terms of how much we spend per month in food. But, um, I actually think my budget that I overspend in is probably Amazon mm -hmm. because I haven't really been intentional about creating a separate budget for Amazon. You know, I've been considering things like I've been categorizing, um, you know, everything by that's merchant category, category code. I don't know why I can't, I, I think I want to say categorization. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, but as we talked about earlier, because of Amazon, you can buy like eight different things and they can fall into eight different categories. It's just sort of out of whack. And I think I'm just going to have to create a, an Amazon category and just say, you know, I'm not going to go over this amount on Amazon. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody has any tips for Amazon, let me know. <laughs> Honestly, what I do, I, I do go and separate it out. So I do subscribe and save each month and it fans mm. over. Now it's mostly groceries. I started doing it when I had my son. And so I was buying like diapers and formula and white and baby wipes and, and everything that I could on there because it was super easy to just have it all delivered to the house and never have to worry about going out to get diapers or anything. And then I just started getting basically almost everything I could because it was cheaper than at the you know, traditional grocery store. Um, so anything that was non-perishable, I would try to get through subscribe and save. And there's still a lot of items that we do get each month that, you know, that we can through there. And, you know, that's the thing is I'm always going to have something from Amazon to buy each month. And, you know, it is what it is, but I do try to go through and, and separate. And that's probably the most tedious part of tracking mm -hmm. my expenses mm -hmm. is when I shop at Amazon or a place that has, um, different categories. For the most part, mm -hmm. if I like, if I go to Aldi's and I happen to buy something in the Aldi's find aisle that's yeah. not a grocery item, I'm mm -hmm. not going to worry about it. But if it's like something that has individual, you know, charges that I can actually match up to what I bought, then I try to do, you know, I try, try to, to do, do that. that. So I'm actually more conscious of how much I'm spending and where that money went. Now, how long does it take you to do that? Um, I mean, it, like I said, it's usually only once a month because it's for my subscribing okay, thing. Okay, once so, a month, yeah. You know, it it might take me. The problem is, it takes me multiple days because it depends on when the charge clears. So mm. it, it might be like fifteen minutes for two or three days. You know, like okay. a day, just depending That's on. Not bad. You no, know, it's not bad, but having to go through like. You have to Tedious. go to the mint and then make sure the charge cleared. And then you have to go to Amazon and go to your orders and see what order costs that much money and then go back to mint and update your category. <laughs> like I said, yeah. it's not a difficult thing. It's just tedious. And yeah. so that's probably the one thing that's, that's more tedious than it. Everything else just kind of starts to automate itself over time with mint, which is good. But mm -hmm. with like the annoying thing now, and I have no idea why, because it's not like I bought a ton of gifts this year, but Mint is defaulting all my Amazon purchases to the gift category. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely have to go in and change it. Go back like, and change it. Any gifts this month? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, so I think this is like a good transition to um, our last point, which is, you know, expenses can change over time and therefore so should your spending. You know, what happens in your life is a reflection of where you're spending your money. You know, Stephanie and I always talk about that. Um, where you're spending your money reflects your values, but also where you're spending your money reflects where you are in your life. Um, and so if you have a new job or a new home or, you know, you have a kid or you have a new kid, um, you know, or, or maybe you don't, maybe you separate from your significant other or something like that, your expenses are going to reflect your life changes and that's okay. Be comfortable with your expenses changing over time and fluctuating, you know, this idea that like we are supposed to just spend this one finite amount of money per month and it never can deviate and it can never change. I think it's kind of a weird concept. Um, and I will say like a lot of budgets don't necessarily have, don't necessarily adapt to those kinds of fluctuations. You know, I mentioned earlier that, you know, once a year we go to the cardiologist for my dog. And so, you know, it's going to look like for the month of October that, my pet category that I've blown my budget, you know, for it, um, you know, even though we know it's coming up and even though we know we've got the money for it, it's going to look like I've blown my budget yeah. for it because it's not what I typically spend on our pets per month. Um, yeah. you know, and that's okay. I don't, you know, I can't, there's nothing I can do about that. I'm not going to not take my dog to the vet because I don't like that a certain category is, you know, out. What I do is that you have to compensate for it somewhere else in your budget, especially if you are trying to stay within a, you know, a certain amount of money um, or a certain amount you want to spend per month. But, you know, definitely don't feel like you're not uh, that you're failing at your budget just because your expensive expenses have changed. Because if your life has changed or things come up in your life, then your, your expenses and your budget should change too. That's just natural. Exactly. And that's the thing, like, like I said, with the subscribe and save and the diapers, my son's six now, he's certainly not in diapers and we're not using wipes nearly as much if at all now. So, you know, that's a whole 
category. Baby supplies was a whole category Ooh, for yeah. almost three years. And then it went away. And I was so happy because that was probably like $100 a month that I could now put towards something else. And daycare expenses. Once they start mm. school, you don't have to worry about daycare expenses anymore. For the most part, sometimes you do, but you know, not the full time daycare, which is good. So that's the mm. thing is that you should take a look at your budget, you know, fairly regularly as often as you can. But um, at least once a year. So once yeah. you start tracking your expenses and, you know, figure out how much you really should be spending in each category, figure out where you're spending intentionally, where you're not and cut back in the ones that you're not. And, and it's fine to add to the ones that you are spending intentionally on. Once you figure out what that budget is, then take a look, you know, every three months, six months, at least once a year and say, okay, how have I done the past three months, past six months, however frequent it was, and see where, if you've gone over, if you've gone under, if you've had new categories that have come up that you didn't plan for, but have started to become a regular thing for you, then take mm -hmm. a look at those things. Cause like we said, life changes and this year life has changed for all of us. It <laughs> really, know? really has. Yeah, I mean, it my, definitely. My, my gas category is completely <laughs> down, but yet, you know, my, my uh, water bill and my electricity bill at my house, it hasn't like equaled out what the gas would have been, but it's yeah. definitely gone up. Mine and has gone up too. We get our water bill every quarter as well. And we just mm -hmm. got ours for basically the past summer. And I was like, who, do we have a water leak? Like who can <laughs> all this water? Stop flushing toilets. You'll wash your hands when it rains. <laughs> 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 and water is like the cheapest utility. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing. I'm like, it, you know, it just, there's the expenses that come up that you don't plan for. I couldn't plan yeah. for that water bill because we just, we've been washing our hands a lot lately. As we should yes. be. <laughs> yes, as we all should be. Yes. Well, you know, Steph, in that same vein, I think, um, you know, sort of the last point I'd like to underscore is that um, building a budget that is not right for you, that doesn't reflect your expenses and the way you spend your money is almost as bad as not having a budget as all, at all. Um, and I think the reason being is that if you don't have a budget that actually works for you, you're not, you're going to fail at it, you know, and you're going to get frustrated and you're going to give up and then, and it, it's just going to feel, you know, very dejecting. And that's not what we want for you. That's not what we want for everyone. So I think being realistic about what your monthly expenses actually are, what categories you really do have to spend in. Just like you said earlier, you know, you are deciding to spend more in your grocery category because you want healthier foods. And really in the long term, that $200 extra per month that you're spending in better foods is going to be better for your health in the long run. I'd much rather spend $200 on really good, high quality foods that are going to be good for my body than spending thousands and thousands of dollars trying to fight diabetes or any other kind of, you know, insulin disease. Shots. Yeah. Insulin shots. I mean, it's just like, there are so many more, um, cons to, to spending, um, you know, not buying high quality food. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just obviously food is one category. I think for most people, you know, groceries and food is probably your second biggest category expense category after, you know, your housing expenses. So that's why we keep talking about food. Um, also but I think, love food. I, am, <laughs> I love food. <laughs> But just be realistic about what your expenses are and then create your budget around that. Don't try to fit yourself into some sort of like, especially if you're trying to pursue financial independence. I think I was kind of guilty about that. You know, when I first heard about financial independence, I was just trying to get our expenses down as, as low as possible. And then we couldn't get there and I got frustrated by it. Now, luckily I never gave up on it. You know, I just had to find ways to adapt and just, you know, ultimately say, you know, this is how much we spend on groceries or this is how much we have to spend on, you know, whatever category, and that's okay. You can find other areas that you can compensate for that you can pull pull from. So um, create a budget that actually works for you. Make your budget fit your lifestyle. Don't try to fit your lifestyle into your budget. Absolutely. And so I think the key is, again, to spend intentionally. If you are spending where you find value and what's important to you, then you're spending in the right ways. And mm -hmm. that's what your budget is. That's how mm -hmm. much you should be spending. Certainly, you can try to find deals and, and everything. But, you know, if you're spending what you're spending and that's important to you, then that's what you're spending. Be proud that's of that. Right. <laughs> be proud of it. Own it. Own, Own it. it. <laughs> so the one thing we will say is our challenge of the week to you guys is 
If you are not spending where you shouldn't be, mm. we want you to apply the 24 hour rule to all unplanned purchases this week. So that means anything that you haven't budgeted for or didn't expect to have to pay for that was coming up, wait at least 24 hours before buying it. And that gives you time to think about if you really want to spend your money on that item. And so this isn't something that we've come up with. I've heard a lot of people talk about this. Some people even have the 72 hour rule, yeah. which is yeah. even better, but we're only giving you 24 hours. Just think about it. But you know, the key is like a prime example is prime day. Prime day. Okay. Now granted prime day ends today. So if there's something on there that you saw and you really want, you're probably not going to have the deal tomorrow, but let's face it. If you just saw it today and you're like, Oh, that's cool. I should get that thing it's probably not something that's been on your mind for a while. Like, you know, yeah. actually a good example, and even though it wasn't a prime day deal, I have been wanting a new set of pots and pans for the longest time. Mm. And I know you've come to my house and I need a new Oh, set. Stephanie, they got to go. Oh. Anymore, you know, like they, I just don't use them anymore. And they've just been sitting there like mocking me going, ha ha, we're gross, don't ever touch us. <laughs> and so bad. I, I really wanted a new set and we had been talking about getting a fire pit and all the ones we're looking at are like a hundred something dollars, 200 something dollars. And it just hit me the other day. And it's like, if we are going to get fire pit and spend a hundred something or 200 something dollars on a fire pit, we really should be putting that money towards pots and pans because I cook literally every single day and that benefits the entire family. And it's a health issue because we, the, the pots and pans that I had that I can't use anymore, it's because all the Teflon and nonstick stuff had started to scratch off. And that is a health issue. You know, yeah. you just don't want to use it for that. So I'm like, yeah. you know what, let's, let's do something that's good for the family and good for everyone. And I have, it has been on my mind for the like literally the longest time, it, well over a year. And so I, it wasn't a prime day deal, but two days ago I, I bought myself a new set of pots and pans. They came in yesterday and I love, love, love them. So that was worth it to me. It wasn't my, my, you know, plan. It wasn't in my budget this month, but it just was like, now's the time this is right for me. And it has been on my mind for the longest time. Whereas yeah. if I go to prime day today and look at all the little deals and I'm like, Oh yeah, I could definitely use another pair of like, you know, stretch capris or whatever. Like, no, yeah. I don't need another pair. Okay. <laughs> I, I feel like we have an interloper in the comments. Somebody's asking for a fire pit. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your husband? <laughs> uh, maybe. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you know, Sam says kind of coming soon, I hear. So maybe. Yes. There you go. <laughs> I hear that. If you build it, the fire will come. <laughs> there you go. If you build the fire pit, the fire. Well, luckily, <laughs> I saw that you were building a fire pit, so we're just going to drive up to Delaware and enjoy your fire pit, and make sure you get a hot tub to go with that fire pit, because oh, that would be awesome. I want a hot tub <laughs> so badly. <laughs> I got plenty of things on my wish list, you know, but it's, if I'm budgeting for it, and right now, you know, a hot tub, as much as I want one, is just not a key priority for us, so we're not building a fun for it. Maybe one day, though, we will. I um, know. That's true. Yeah. No, I, I really like this, um, this uh, tip. I, you know, I talked about this last week is that I'm a recovering shopaholic and, um, and it took me years to build up that muscle where I could walk through a store and I could see things that I wanted and, you know, that, that weren't, I, that I was not planning to go and buy and I could see things that I wanted and I could turn around and leave because I could, I could look at it and try to evaluate, okay, is this actually going to provide me any kind of value? Um, if it is, I can wait you know, I can always come back and get it, um, especially if it's not the last one. You can always come back and get it. Something else I will say is that, you know, and this kind of goes with the 24 hour rule. If there's something you really want and it's the last one there at the store, you know, it's the last one on Amazon or whatever, you could buy it and hold on to it. Don't open it. Don't use it. Hold on to it and wait that 24 hours or wait that 72 hours. Yep. And if you can really, you know, if you can say, you know what, I, I thought about this. I don't actually need this. And that money that can, it's going to go towards my long-term goals. It's going to go towards my financial independence, or it's going to go towards something that's more important to me. Um, I'm going to take it back to the store, you know, or I'm going to return it. it. 
And when you do that a couple times, here's a little pro tip. When you do that a couple times, you're going to get so annoyed by having to get in the car and go back to the store and return it or get in the car and go drop it off at UPS for Amazon to return it, that you're not going to want to buy stuff anymore. Yeah. And so, but it takes time and it's a practice. So oh, that's a great um, idea. Yeah. yeah it's, a, I'm telling you when you've, we, we're, we're going to do an episode about, you know, curbing impulse shopping and, and spending and stuff like that, because that's something I I still have to work to overcome. Um, but this is something that the, the 24 hour rule can definitely apply to. And let us know if there's something that you have resisted buying over the course of the next week, let us know. Um, you can find us on Instagram or Facebook um, and let us know if you were able to apply the 24 hour rule before you made that purchase. I know. Yeah. I'm excited to hear what everyone has given up or waited yeah. for. <laughs> yeah, I am too. All right. Well, why don't we kind of go back over what we've talked about today, just so we can reiterate these points. So um, number one, we talked about that budgeting and tracking or budgeting and tracking expenses are not the same thing that in order to set your budget, you have to start tracking your expenses first. Um, and that actually how you spend your money is what is, um, tracking your expenses and how you should be spending your money is what your budget is. Yeah. Um, and then tracking your expenses is the first step to creating your budget. So okay. again, you have no idea how much you really should be budgeting each month until you know how much you're actually spending now. And not to say that what you're spending now is the right amount, but it's what you are spending and it's a number for you to consider what you should try to budget around. So either you can figure out if it's way too much, and you can try to cut back. Or if you say, yep, that seems about right. I'm going to go with that. That's right. And then next is determine the right amount for you for each category that, and then build a budget that works for you. So don't try to, you know, create a budget that doesn't fit for your lifestyle and try to fit your lifestyle around that. Create your budget around your lifestyle. Now, certainly there are categories where we can all cut back in. But if you set your budget based off of what your actual expenses are, you have a higher likelihood of being successful with your spending goals every single month, as opposed to trying to fit yourself into something that just doesn't work for your life. Definitely. And then the last point was to review, adjust, and improve your budget. Check your budget regularly. If you're just starting to budget, then check it once a month. Every other month, you know, check how much you're doing. If you've been budgeting for a while and you feel pretty confident in it, then you can stretch it out to six months or a year, but definitely at least once a year, check your budget, see how your spending trends are. If you're consistently going over in a certain category, then consider if that's really how much you should be spending. And if you're spending more in a category that you really don't find value in and, and haven't really been spending intentionally in, then figure out what you can do to start cutting back in that category. So it's okay if, you know, your budget isn't perfect and you have to make adjustments Adjustments. That's the whole point. Life changes and your budget should change too. That's right. All right. Well, that's our episode for this week. Next week, we are going to be switching gears. We're going to be talking about growing wealth and investing. And specifically, we're going to be talking about why Stephanie and I love index funds. And boy, do we love <laughs> index funds. <laughs> so if you have been wondering what you should be investing in, whether it's for your 401k or your IRAs or even a taxable brokerage account, you will not want to miss this episode. We're going to go all into index funds and why we love them and why we think they are such a great tool for growing and building wealth. All right. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel um, and also click the bell for notifications that lets you know when we're going live and when we have new videos on our channels. It also helps our videos be found in the search results. And, you know, we uh, we have this mission at Winance. We want to help everybody transform their lives through their finances. And so by clicking like and subscribe, you help us uh, and share that mission out with everyone and help everyone live their best lives through transforming their finances. So thank you so much. Don't forget about the challenge of the week, wait 24 hours, and we will see you all next week. Yes. Thank you, everyone. I will get everything set up now. All right. <laughs> bye. Bye, everyone.